manager, you can contact the club or you can contact me. Uh, feel free to grab one of my cards and then again I'll be able to give you your username and password. You go to collegefitbetter.com, click login in the right corner. It's going to pull up a new window, I enter my username and password. First thing I want to do is change my password because my username and password are the same. So up here where it says account info, I just click that. And on the uh, bottom left, it's going to say change password. I click that, enter the new password twice, and then that way uh, I'll have a little bit more security on my account. Now, I go to my athletes tab. All of your athletes should already be in there, but at any point you can add athletes. So let's say a new player comes to your team, or maybe just someone was left off the roster. Uh, all I have to do is click on this first plus sign. I can enter their first and last name. I just have to choose men's soccer and then the team will show up, and then once I save it, it creates a username and password for them. Now this down arrow, if I log, log in, so let's say a bunch of my players don't have the logins, or I just created five new players and they all need their logins, if I click the down arrow and download an Excel sheet with all the logins for the players on my team, so I can just copy and paste and send the information to them. Um, the other thing is this second plus sign. Let's just say there's a player that is on a U15 team and you're the U16 team and they're guesting up. You can uh, do a roster player so that basically they'll be on the original brochure, but they will be guest playing on as many brochures in the club as they guest play on. So the second plus sign, I click on it. There's a drop down of all the players on the men's side. I type in the name of the player that's guesting with us. I save it. It keeps them on their brochure, but adds them as a guest player to my brochure. Now let's just say they played the weekend and I want to remove them from my roster. All I have to do is wear this little pencil pointing out a box and I click that. The bottom left will say delete from team. It will not delete them from their team, it just removes them from the team they guest played on and then they will still be on their original team. That's also how you can delete a player if they were to leave your team. Um, again, just click on the little pencil pointing out a box, click delete from team and it removes them from the team. Now these check marks will indicate who's on the brochure and who's not. So out of the 22 athletes, 17 are checked. That means 17 out of 22 are on my brochure. So if someone either didn't fill out their profile, or maybe they got hurt, or maybe they're just not going because they're on vacation, I remove the check mark and remove them from the profile or the brochure. Now if I click on profile, it makes the tabs disappear, and then it's going to take me to my team profile. Now all the information in here is put in by the players. So when they enter information on their end, it fills in on the uh, manager end. So now you're basically just having to click a button to print out your brochures for the event. So first thing is, again, all of my players that have a check marker here. Under info, this is just information that will be on the brochure. So like my head coach, the level, different things like that. If for some reason the club accomplishment or info is uh, blank, it has to be filled out by the club. So you just have to contact the club or again, you can contact me for pretty much anything. Um, now, under roster, if I want to send this to a college coach or someone outside of College Fit Finder, I would just copy and paste the link at the top, the URL, send it, put an email, person clicks on the link, it goes right to the profile we're looking at right here. Now, if I want to print this out, I just click print. It's going to download um, my front and back PDF version of my brochure. So now again, all this information was filled out by the players. So again, I'm just reminding them to update their uh, profiles. If a player commits, it automatically puts a logo school they're going to, says they're committed, so no more like crossing things out and telling them, they're sorry, they're committed. It can be done automatically through the system once the player's fill out the information. All I have to do now is click print, print it out, and print out as many of these as I want, take these to the event, hand these out to coaches. The other thing is I can download a PDF. So if I were to want to add this as an attachment, I just click on the down arrow, and I'm able to do that as well. That's pretty much it for the manager version. It's really easy to use. Again, the main thing you're going to be using it for is printing out those shirts. So you're just having to remind the players to update their profiles. Um, because again, some managers print on that Wednesday or that Thursday. So just remind your players so they can get those things updated. Especially GPAs, graduates, uh, graduates should remain the same. But all these things need to be up to date so that coaches are going after the right type of player. Okay? Um, any questions for the managers before I move on to the player portion of it? Again, if you don't have your username and password, just contact me. I'll be able to get that to you right away. Just give me one sec. I'm going to log into a player account, and then we'll get started on that. So are those players from the club who want to let me come in? Ivan? Yes. Are there some of these players from the club before I get started? Do you want to make sure that they come in?
think we're, because I think we're supposed to start at 8.15, so we're a couple minutes early, but we'll wait a minute or two. Make sure that if you're 
committed, it says that, so coaches aren't reaching out to players that are committed on the back end of the programs. Now, under video, this is not where I'm going to add my videos or edit them. This is just where they show up on my profile. I'll show you in a second how I can upload videos and edit them. All of my athletics information. The one thing that I cannot fill out is like the team information that has to be filled out by the club or the team manager. So if that's blank, again, you can contact the manager, but you can always contact me if something needs to be done. For the academics information, The only thing that I would say for this is the coursework. So it's meant for you to list your courses under each level. So for example, if I already put AP in here and I list my courses and I'm like, okay, I want to do another AP course and I were to try to find AP, it won't allow you to have another AP uh, level. So I would just have to click here and edit that course in to the existing level. So once I put AP, all those courses are supposed to go there. Again, I only want to put my AP, honors, college prep, or ID, no general education courses. And then again, all my information over here, I can even upload a transcript. Now for references, I can put, again, coaches, teachers, uh, anyone that can talk about me as a player, but also as a student or as a person, it would be good to put that information there. The one thing you want to make sure of with your references, make sure you let them know that they're one of your references. Because again, the worst thing that can happen is college coach calls one of them, and they're like, I'm sorry, who is this? Who are you talking about? But if you let them know they're a reference, they're prepared to talk to that college coach once that call comes in. Again, that goes outside of soccer. Once you are done with soccer, for go putting people on like a job resume, you want to let everybody know that they're a reference so they're prepared for a call. Now for the contact information, you just make sure that your contact information is up to date, your coach's contact information is up to date. Put in your parents' information again. They're going to want to talk to your coach or to you, but you can put in your parents' information just so they have that in case. Um, now, if I want to print this out, so let's just say you're going to an event, I want to print out 10 of these to take with me. I just click print. It's going to download the PDF to my computer. Now I select it, and then now I'm able to print these out and take these to the event with me. So now, again, let's just say I take 10 of these with me to an event. Maybe I've been having a hard time getting hold of the coach, and maybe I can player profile so that coach if I were to see it. So my suggestion is to print out some of these and put these in your bag because you never know who you're going to run into. Just click up here to print it out. I can also download it and add it as an attachment to an email as well. Now once I've filled out my player profile, again the tabs disappeared so all I have to do to go back to where the tabs were is click on the CFF logo. It makes all the tabs reappear. Now you have the ability to edit your existing or edit as many videos as you want to create your own highlight video or I can just upload a video if you've already created one. So here's how it works. I have to put the video onto YouTube or Vimeo or Huddle or a platform first and get a share link. So after I upload it, like for example on YouTube, um, it has to be public because it streams from YouTube through our system, but it can be unlisted so people won't be able to find your video. So once I upload it, I find the share link underneath of it. I copy and paste it where it says paste your link here. Now, if I'm just, let's just say I've already created this video and I just want to upload it, I'll just press start and then I'll, once I get into the system, I'll show you how you just upload the video. But let's just say I have two or three games I want to take highlights from. After I upload them, again, I'm just going and finding the share link, copy and pasting. And again, I can put as many as I want, as many as I want in. So if I've got like five or six games that I want to take, um, different highlights from. I'm just continuing copying and pasting the share links into where it says paste your link here. Once I'm ready, I press start. Now let's just say I've already created this video, I just want to upload it. All you're going to do is click start highlight on the bottom left, let the whole video play out, same spot, click finish highlight, and then save it. But now if I'm actually trying to create highlights from this video, let's just say the person scoring in a second is me and I want to record it. I just click start highlight in the bottom left corner. It's going to start recording that part of the video. So I let this highlight play out. And again, if I'm just uploading, I let it play all the way out. Once I'm done, I click finish highlight. Now on the bottom, it says previous highlight. I can go back and do a couple things to that highlight. So I click back, and then I pause it. So first thing I want to do is, I'm going to do this a bunch of times, so I want to put a description of what the highlight is. So I can put in the correct order, so I can just put in the word goal, but only you see that as the player, no one else can see that. Now I can add overlays as well, so let's say I want to spot shot myself, click on overlays, click on the circle, circle shows up on the video, put it around myself, make it a little bit smaller.
smaller. And then now I can insert an arrow if I want. I can insert text, so maybe I just want the word goal. So what's going to happen is, again, I can grab the word and where I want. It's going to freeze for a couple seconds and put a circle around me, put the word goal, and then the video will continue to play out. Um, now, if I want to go and continue to add new highlights, I just go back to that same video, or I can even click on the next video. And then now I'm just repeating that same process of start highlighting the bottom left. It starts recording that part of the video. I let that part play out. Again, click finish highlight, add my overlays, all the things that I want to add in my description. Now, besides my highlights, I can create titles. So let's say I want a title. Again, I'm a goal scorer. Just want a title that says goals. I click on titles, insert title, type in the word. The word shows up. I can move it to the middle. And then now I have a title. Now to change the word of the video is really simple. All I have to do is click on something, <coughs> drag it, drop it, it changes the order. Now when I'm done, I save it. I can upload an image, change the name of the video, and I can also give people the ability to watch the full video if I want. But let's just say I'm being a little lazy off the ball, I don't want them to see the full video. I click there to disable that, publish it, it automatically posts to my player profile. There's no limit to videos I can create. Again, streaming, so we don't hold data and nothing like that. The other thing is you can edit existing videos. So if I created this video and maybe it's been a year since you created it and I want to add new highlights, I'm able to do that by clicking edit. The other thing I can do is maybe one of my coaches watch the video and says, hey, I like your video, but move your last goal first. Again, I would just go in here and click edit. It takes me right back to where I was in the video. Now, if my coach just told me to move around my goals, I'll just click, drag, and drop. If I want to add new highlights, I click on add videos, copy and paste in new links, new videos show up. Now I can add new highlights for new videos because maybe it's been a while since I created this. Once I add whatever I'm adding or make my changes, I save it again, publish it again, and then automatically post whatever change I've made to my player profile in that video. Now, under player preferences, you want to fill these out right away with your player profile. Because like I mentioned, college coaches, they get free accounts. They can search off of your player preferences to find players that they're looking for. So for example, when I fill these out, let's say a coach is only looking for a player looking for their division, or their location, or their school size, or their majors. If you match what they're looking for, your profile will get pulled up in that search. If you do not fill any of your preferences out, you, no matter what, even if you match everything they're looking for, you will not get pulled up in a search. There's other ways for them to search for you, but you want to make sure that every way possible they're able to pull you up, especially if they're looking specifically for what you're looking for in your preferences, okay? Um, the other thing is when I go to each college page, it's going to give you a match based on your info, and without the preferences filled out, that number won't be correct, okay? I'll, I'll show you that right now. So now the most important part of the program is the college search. This is going to allow you to go in and put a bunch of different information and pull up a list of schools, that maybe you've never heard of that fit what you're looking for. Let's just start by doing this. So raise your hand if you know the name of the school that you want to go to. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Come on. Raise, raise your hand. We only got one school. Anybody? Yes. Cal State LA. Cal State LA. What else? That's DSU. Okay. Anyone else? Let's do like four more. Yeah. Okay. What else? Yeah. Okay, let's we'll do two more. Come on. Anyone raise their hand? One more. One more. Okay. All right. So for the most part, what do all these schools have in common? For the most part. For the most part, they're all D1 schools. They're all super competitive. They're all kind of hard to get into, so I better have a good GPA. Okay. So these are things that I got to think about, and if I were to have that list, and let's just say I'm not a Division One player. I would be in trouble with a list like that if I'm not a Division One player. So first thing you want to do is you want to have a conversation with your club coach to find out, coach, what division should I be looking at? Because again, you may not want to hear the answer, but let's just say you are not a Division One player, but I'm only put, putting Division One schools on my list. When I become a senior, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. I'm not going to have any options. So it's important that I'm doing a good job of talking to my coach so that he can tell me, hey, I think you should be looking at this level. So now I can really isolate that level and not waste my time with levels that I have no business plan, okay? 
again, you may not want to hear the answer, but with this recruiting process, if I know which level I should be looking at, it's going to help you a lot. Okay? Now, all I have to do is on the left side, there's a bunch of filters. So I put in men and women's soccer, it switches all the schools to men and women's soccer. I can search per division. My suggestion is don't search per division. Search other things first, okay? Now, I can also search based on the last three years record of every team. So we have the last three years record of every team in the country. So the higher the team rating, the better their last three years record is. I can do it based off of my GPA, my SAT scores. I can also do it based off of the power ranking. I'll explain that when I go to the college page. I can do it based on the different parts of the country. So let's just say I want to play on the East Coast. I also want to play on the West Coast. And then maybe I also have family in Colorado. So I want to see schools in Colorado. So I can do as many different parts of the country or states as I want. As I put it in there, it automatically filters. I can also search based on majors. So let's say I want to be a business major. Type in business. Make sure I find, uh, make sure the school I'm looking at has my major. It's really important if you do know your major. I can also look based on the size of the school. So if I don't want to go to a school that's 60,000 um, students, I can take this and scroll this down. I can do it based off of different settings or affiliations. And then I can do it based off of how much it costs to go to school per year. So if I can't afford 60,000 a year, I take this and I scroll this down so I can find schools that are something that I can afford. Now, once I put in all my filters, you're going to see a score under each college. So what it's saying is based on your filters on the left side, this school is a 92% fit for you. So again, as I were to select a school, it shows up on the right side. If I want to find out more information, I click more info, it takes me into a college page. So what we did is we created a college page for college. Because sometimes when you go on a university website, it's hard to find um, the information you need. It's all over the place. So what we did is we created a page for college that makes it really easy to find the info you need. So first thing is power ranking. This is based on an overall snapshot of the school. So it's based on the academic info, so how good their academics are, their division they play in, and then the team ranking, which is the last three years record. So it's meant to give you an overall snapshot. So for example, a Division three school could have a higher power ranking than the D1 school if that D3 school is going 21 and 1, has great academics, and the D1 school is 1 and 19, doesn't have very good academics. So just giving an overall snapshot of the school. Also now, a match, this is based on your information. Remember the last page, this number is based on the filters. This one is based off of your athletics, your academics, and then your preferences as well. So that's why it's important to fill your preferences. Now when I go to the applying information, it has all the information as far as admissions, deadlines, acceptance rates, average GPAs, and test scores. Also on the left side, you can see a bunch of suggestions of schools that I should be looking at. So what it's doing is based on the school you're looking at, it's going to give you a bunch of suggestions of other schools that might be a good fit. So as I go to the next tab, which is academics, all of these schools switch. So now it's going to give you a really good look at schools that maybe you've never heard of that would be a great fit for you. So again, all the majors, all the classes, all the financial information, tuition, scholarships, financial aid, uh, student information so I can go to the uh, university websites if I want to, team information so the coach can put in the team highlight video. Then you can also see the last three years record so you can see how they progressed over the last three years. Staff information, so if I want to reach out to the coach or email them or call them, I have the information right there. Now, I do all the research. I like a school. I think it's a great fit for me. This part indicates if they're on my favorites list or not. So if it's blue, I just click it. It sends it to my favorites list. The next tab is a sub-tab. It's called the favorites list. This is where every time I click on a heart, it sends that school to my list. Now, I can also order that list, so let's just say I want to make the school number two. I click on the card, drag and drop, changes the order of the list. Very simple. The club coaches can see, um, number one, okay, what schools are on your list are you being relisted, and then what order they're in. Now, with the college coach, the system is meant for the more work you do in the system, the more attention you're going to get by coaches using the system. So, for example, under the favorites list, every time I click on a heart, if a coach has a uh, free account through us, your player profile goes into a tab that says likes our school. So we mentioned a couple different schools. Maybe some of those schools maybe have like a couple hundred kids in it, but there's a bunch of schools out there that maybe have five or ten kids on a list. Now, if I'm on a list of ten kids and that coach knows for a fact that I'm interested in their school, they don't know what number they are, but maybe that's the reason why the coach reaches out to me. Again, 
It's not going to get you recruited, but I'm trying to do all these little things that are going to get you more attention and then get you recruited in, in the long run. Okay? Now I'll go back to the search. So this thumbs up, it indicates if so your club coaches have access to the system. They can see your activity, they can also put in um, correspondence that they've had conversations. But now if they want to recommend you to a program and they recommend you to the system, this thumbs up will fill in blue just like the heart does. So if it's ever filled in, it means that your club coach has recommended you to that program. Okay? Now So under the camps tab, right now you won't see very many camps in there because when the date goes by, it just automatically moves the camp. We had about 100 camps in there at the beginning of the summer. So now, let's just say we do have 100 camps in there. Again, they're put in directly by the college coaches. I'm able to go in and filter based on the date or part of the country, how many schools are attending the camp, how much it costs to go to the camp. So if I want to go to a camp that's $1,000, I can take this and scroll this down to whatever I can afford. So again, it's just a camp database that allows me to go in. I were to select a school or a camp, shows up on the right side, shows me how much it costs, I go to the website, and now if I like it, I can register for that camp if I want to. So it's just information about ID camps. And again, once their season ends, we start to see this start to fill up a lot and a lot. Right now, again, they're just starting with their season, most of them, and most of their camps are pretty much done. So now for the activity tab, if I have 50, 60 schools on my list, it's going to be hard to keep track of all the correspondence between me and those schools. So what I have to do is I want to keep track of the correspondence using the activity tab. So let's just say I'm about to hop on the phone with a coach. I can type in the name of the school. It's going to filter and show me all the correspondence that are associated with that school. So if I were to select something, it shows me my past conversations. So now if I'm about to hop on the phone, I can go over my last couple conversations remember what we talked about, and then bring some of those things up and have a great conversation with the coach. So now if I'm really organized, I'm never going to bring in things from other conversations and confuse them with other coaches because I don't want to do that, okay? So now if I want to manually keep track of my correspondence, let's just say I had a phone call or an email, I would click on the plus sign, there's a drop down, I put the date, I just type in my name, I type in the name of the college that I spoke to, I put in what type of correspondence, was it a phone call, was it an email, who sent it, they sent it to you, did you send it to them, and then now I can just type in notes, we had a good conversation, which we talked about, or I can copy and paste an email. Once I save it, it'll save it in my activity tab, but it also goes to my club coach, so my club coach can see all the correspondence that I put in. The other thing is if they put in correspondence, you can see that as well. So if you went to an event and your coach talked to five college coaches for you, you'll all be able to see that in here. Same thing with recommendations. I'm able to just go and filter based on different categories. So I can break down the data of the information there however I want. Now, the other thing is I can also email from the system. I'm only allowed to email one school at a time from the system. But if I want to, I click on the envelope. Now I type in the name of the school. <coughs> Shows me the coaches, it's going to email. Now I can type in my email. You know, I, I'm interested in your school for whatever reasons. Again, don't just tell them to come watch you play. I should be doing the research to let them know, hey, here are the reasons why I really want to go to your school. And again, that way they know for a fact that you're interested in their school, not just wanting them to come watch you play. Now when I press next, this is what it looks like when it sends it to a coach. It has a picture of me, who it's being sent by, who it's being sent to. It has my name, it has my grad year, GPA, position, club. If they were to click on my name, it takes them right to my player profile, so I don't have to add my player profile, it's automatically added in. And then whatever email I type in will be right there. It also lets them know this is not coming from College Fit Finder, it's coming directly from the player. Once you send it, it tracks it for you in the activity. So if you send it to the system, you don't have to track it manually. Now, the last thing on the club website, there's something called a fit box. This just has a lot of information you might need. So there is login instructions if you've never logged in before. We put together 20 videos about the recruiting process, talking about highlight videos, ID camps, different divisions. If you want to find out more about the process, just click on a video and you can watch to find out more. When players commit, like I showed you on your end, it'll put a picture of the player as long as you put in a player profile picture the school that you're going to with your info, and that's done automatically, so if a player were to commit right now, you'll see that player come, uh, automatically show up. Then for the resources, this is everything you need for the process, academically or athletically. 
So now, let's say I want to play D1 or D2. I can click there to go directly to the eligibility center. I can fill out a FAFSA form, go to the NSA website, uh, SAT testing dates, whatever I need. I just click on a title, it takes me right to that web page. Now, does anyone have any questions? I know I went through that kind of quickly, um, but I believe they're recording this, so uh, I believe we'll be able to send out the footage if you have questions. The other thing, you can contact me at any time if you do have questions, feel free to take one of my cards. But does anyone have any questions about anything while we're in? Yeah, go ahead. Um, is it similar to LinkedIn that you can see how many people have looked at your profile? So, not yet. So, there are some other systems out there that do that. Like the college coaches look through your profile. Our college coaches clicked on your video. Yeah. So, we're going, we're developing that. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to redefine what those things are because some things, when they're used like that, can be very gimmicky. Mm -hmm. So, like, we want it to be actually valuable when it says a coach viewed your profile or a coach clicked on your profile. So we're trying to redefine what those things mean. And what I mean by redefine is sitting on your profile for five seconds. Is that a view? Watching your video and then clicking on a couple page. So we're just trying to define what those things are so it's valuable for the player. But that will be coming out sometime next year. Yes? What's your contact information? My contact information? Uh, you can either go to our website or just take one of my cards. Um, they're just right up here. And I'll have my, uh, my cell phone and my email. And again, you can contact me at any time and I can help you with whatever you need. Anybody else? Yes? Uh, you mentioned that the college coaches have a free account. Yes. Site. Um, can every college coach see the full list of the activity? Because you said the activity will be the email that you send. So can the college coach see all the emails that you send? So, no. The college coach cannot see anything but the, the things that you're sending to them or the player profile link that you're sending to them. They don't even, again, they know that you're interested in their school if you put it on your favorites list, but they don't know what number, you know, like I don't have to be afraid to put a school on my list that has number 100. They don't know they're number 100. They just oh. know I'm interested. Yes? Is there a way to make your account private while you're building your profile? Like, let's say you want to get your coach to look at your videos before you make it public to the coach that you're trying to impress and you can look at it and say, um, take that one down. Well, the thing is, is that they're going to need that link anyway to go to your profile. So until you start sending out your link to people, it's technically... They, they, but aren't they able to search the players? That they they can uh, if they have an account, but there's no way to like turn the account off. So, but the good thing is, let's just say they are searching and you haven't like fully filled out your profile yet because you're in the process. If they're looking based on different things and your information is in there, it's not going to pull. It's meant to pull up kids that have like filled out their own profile, things like that. So if you are really not done with what you're doing in the system, the coaches really aren't going to be able to find you because when they're looking based on the info, you're not going to get the results. Okay. So yes and no. Yes. Any other questions about anything? Even the process. If you got a question about the college recruiting process, anything. So. Um, this, this program is yeah, no. only been around? So we've been around for about eight years. You guys are so I noticed that there's a lot of colleges in the room, and that's what you look at it. But there's also a good number where the coaches have a lot of man how to use it. You know, it actually shows that. It says or on the college, so they'll say the coach has a ever lot of it. Where did you find that? Um, it's either when you click into the colleges or it's in the college list. So I have to look at that because I think that has to, it, I don't think it has to do with the actual login of the coach. It has to, I think it has to do with something else. Okay. I have to, I would have to double check exactly where you're finding that. Okay. Maybe if you could send me a screenshot yeah. of that for sure because I'm pretty sure that you can, that, that works for something and that can be a feature that we're coming out with yet, it's not live, uh, so I just have to see exactly what it is. Sometimes they know things and push it, and then I didn't even know that it came out, so send me the link, I'll make sure that that's accurate. Yeah, and then what I'm assuming is bringing to my question, which is, um, with that being said, I just want to know that all the colleges that are listed sort of are active. So, so all the colleges that are listed are the, all the colleges are in there regardless. So all the colleges you see in there, we have all the information of all the colleges. Now the, the free account is just a bonus for the coaches to advertise our ID camps for free to all the players and to be able to search the database for the players. So it's really just a bonus for those coaches. I'm pretty sure there's really no way 
I mean, I have to double check what that feature that you're talking about is because I don't think there's a way for you guys to see if the coach is logged in because there's no there's no direct communication yet. Yeah, I'll send you. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Anything else? What does the number and the star mean? So the number of the star is the team rating, and again, that's based on the last three years' record. Well, ten is the highest. Yes. Yes. I missed this part. Um, what's the cost associated with this program? It's free. The club has already paid for it. So everyone has access completely free through the club. And so there's really no reason you shouldn't use this. Um, if you haven't received your using a password, has, who has not received your using a password? Good. What's the age? Yeah. Or we're just okay, great. Okay. So, so two things, okay? So, if you don't have your logins, you contact your manager. If they don't have their login, the manager can contact me, or you can contact me, and I can get you in. If for some reason, because there's a ton of teams in the club, if your team hasn't been added yet, they should have been, but we just got a couple teams from the girls' side that have been added. All you need to do is have your manager email me, and I will upload their team. So it's Pretty simple process. So again, if you need something, take my info, feel free to contact me. If anyone has any other questions, again, there is a cost associated with it, but the club is picking up that cost for everything. Yes? What's your recommendation for age? Like at what age or what grade level they should have a profile? So I'm pretty sure the club started eighth grade and up. Eighth grade? And I think it's just because they want people to get used to the system. You know, it really, boys, the recruiting process is going to start a little bit later for them than the girls. Um, and especially there are some new rules at the like Division One level. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if I'm in there, I would suggest possibly, unless I'm a really, really high level starting, really as a freshman, because a lot of the information I'm going to put in as an eighth grader, it's not going to be valid. I'm going to want to put yeah. most of my information in my high school career, whether that's academics, or athletics. So, you know, if you want to get used to the system and you're using it and you're pulling out colleges, great. But for the most part, I would, you know, eighth, ninth grade up, we'll, we'll probably be using this. Yes. One more. Um, on when you were uh, doing the example of the videos and putting clips up there, is yeah. that is that from that's from home videos that the parents or whatever whoever's so, doing? You can yeah, stuff I really go over that too much, but. You guys need to start recording as many games as possible because to create a video, it takes it's going to take you tons of footage. Because again, I want highlights. I don't want simple passes from like a center back to the outside back. You know what I mean? You need to have actual highlights. And depending on how involved the player is, you could take a ton of time to get the footage you need to create a one minute or two minute highlight video. Now, with that being said, if I'm creating my video and I don't have enough footage and I have 30 seconds. And I've created that, 30 seconds is better than nothing, so put that 30 seconds on your profile, and then again, you can add to it as you get more footage. Right. But parents, I mean, you've got to start recording um, a lot of games, because again, it's going to take a ton of time to get all the footage you need to create in mean, just a couple minutes. Any other questions? Yes? No. It's, it's, uh, we're not affiliated with them. They're different. They're mainly two tournaments. And they may have, yeah, so God's soccer, they may have like a basic profile, um, but it's, it's nothing to do with us. Any other questions? Oh, last thing, okay. For the most part, we are working, we're developing the iPad and the phone version right now, okay? So that should be done relatively soon. But until then, use a laptop. But once we finish, because again, all our development has gone into the phone iPad version, because now we're making it so it's going to be like an app for your phone. So it won't actually be an app, but there's no difference between a website that's completely compatible with your phone and an app. So that should be launched for, I mean, within the next couple months, I'm hoping. So once that is done, we'll make an announcement. But until then, use your laptop. But the whole reason we changed over the system in March the new system is to make it fully compatible with your phone. We're just working out some little bugs on that. End. But again, laptop now, again, we'll announce when iPad phone version is flawless. Okay? 
Again, feel free to take my card. If you have any questions, contact me. Um, do me a favor and contact your manager first. Okay, they can give you that information. If they don't have it or whatever, then feel free to go ahead and contact me. Um, but yeah, anything you guys need.